Today's video is brought to you by the Seeker Strength Off-Season Athlete Program. This is a higher volume program for the start of anyone's off-season. Recommended runtime is about approximately two blocks up until eight weeks. There is no Olympic lifting in this program, and it is, I'm going to say slightly brutal, but very effective to prep you. So if you're in your off-season for your strength training, or you're an athlete and you're off-season for the summer, this is the best way to get it going. Almost everyone at this point has heard of GPP. What GPP stands for is General Physical Preparedness. What most of the time GPP looks like is it's very non-specific strength and conditioning work being done that doesn't really hone in on exactly what you need for your sport. So it might be weightlifters doing some belt squats. It might be rugby players in the gym doing power cleans or it might be powerlifters out rocking with a big heavy backpack on. GPP mostly is used to build capacity, so both aerobic and anaerobic capacity when people are far out from competition. GPP helps with a massive amount of, of different aspects within our training, so it allows us to be more resilient to injury, it allows us to put up with more training volume at higher intensities when we're more close to competition, and it also allows us to move up or down weight categories easily. So it allows us to make large scale morphological changes due to the fact that when we're in GPP phases of training, we have large amounts of calorie expenditure. We usually have quite low load on the body. So although we might have a lot of training volume going on, it's not training volume at incredibly high intensities. If you were to look at an athlete doing a GPP session, most of the time you will see weights that aren't that heavy, speeds that aren't that fast but you will see a lot of volume so for a weightlifters gpp session it might look like some bodybuilding some general strength work but you won't see them doing snatches or snatch complexes or clean and jerks or clean and jerk complexes in the same way whereas if you have a power lifter in a gpp session they might be doing heavy reverse sled drags they might be doing kettlebell swings they might be doing something that's closer to a crossfit style uh workout so some high intensity interval training but not doing the power lifts themselves so what you would have heard from fits was a specific part of training a certain section of training throughout the year that athletes might go into and he talked about the variety of different athletes but how does this fit into the training structure as a whole so for example athletes aren't going to do a gpp phase the week of a competition they're not going to do it a week out from competition they're actually going to do a gpp phase essentially as far away from competition as possible so if we look at a general training structure i know a lot of you might have seen that kind of structural triangle of uh, periodization and the stereotypical kind of block periodization principles are something that most people apply to their training and in general apply it with great success so what a typical training structure will look like will be something like a gpp phase or a very non-specific phase as we might call it or we might call it a high volume phase so something that's very far away from our competition lifts in some scenarios this is incredibly far away and in other scenarios it might even look like the same competition movement or lift or sport but it'll just be a whole lot more of it or very particular sections of it repeated over and over again so in general gpp phases are done according to what sport you're doing what age the athlete is what experience the athlete is and also the prior peak that athlete has and had done and then in general injury status so for example sports with dedicated off seasons because there's no competitions an snc coach will run that gpp phase in those off seasons as they are blissfully and very acutely aware that the off season cannot be run during an on season so rugby players track and field athletes will have dedicated off seasons where there is no competitions running there is no matches or games played and in this scenario our athlete has a chance psychologically to recover from their actual sport so we can't do that sport all year round so it is a good mental break from those athletes we have a kind of physiological break we can't repeatedly apply the same stimulus to the body and expect the exact same results or same rate of improvement and at a certain phase we'll eventually see a decaying performance. So we use these off-season times to get our GPP phases in. Now the whole off-season won't look like a GPP phase. So the initial part of that off-season, the first couple of weeks will be a GPP phase. And then we'll move through the rest of those cyclical phasic structures of periodization and smart programming. So we'll go from kind of a higher volume phase to more of a specific phase. And then eventually we'll get back into our sports specific work back into our season and rinse and repeat throughout the athlete's career. 
So this kind of structure is what a lot of very successful athletes and sports teams use. They'll move through each of these phases throughout the year and successfully run through those. So they'll have their kind of high volume phase, sports training phase or the strength training phase, very little sports specific work. And then these will slowly accumulate into the middle and will be less of that general training and more of our sport specific work until eventually the prime goal and the prime training and energy expenditure the athletes will do during the week is primarily all of their sport specific work and the least amount of non-sport specific work during the week. Right, so the next question is when do athletes do this, right? So the first example we'd have is a powerlifter. Powerlifters are the easiest by far to talk about in this case because the programming is incredibly simple and they get to pick when their competitions are, or at least they'll get to pick when they compete. So in this case, we have a full year mapped out. We'll say they're gonna compete twice, so they'll compete in May and they'll compete in November. So this is when the competition is on. If we're looking then at the planning for that competition, assuming this person has no massive deficit, so they'll have to spend a lot of time in a, a capacity phase or they'll have to spend a lot of time in a, a really specific area like if their bench press is incredibly weak and they have to spend a huge amount of time in their benching it would change things around slightly but most of the time what you'll see is kind of a four month lead in or a three month lead into the competition and then at the start they'll have their GPP work. So usually GPP phases will last around four weeks, six weeks, eight weeks depending on how poorly conditioned the athlete is so here you'll see GPP being done in January and you'll see it being done once again in July. Now where you can make up a small bit of time and the way you can get a small bit better at doing GPP phases is you can bring them into your deload. So after this competition in November when we're kind of deloading, we're taking a bit of break, say it's in the second week of November, you might have a week or 10 days of a deload where you don't really go to the gym too much, you might just be moving around, you might do some just aerobic work then we can start sneaking in this sort of GPP work here. We'll gain an extra month in our actual strength phase for the next competition, and we're making sure we're in really good shape when we get into that strength phase. So the second option, and probably my favorite option, is putting GPP work in just after competitions when the athlete is kind of deloading. They're not gonna go straight back in and do a load of strength work. They'll do their GPP work here, and then it allows us to go through and instead of having three months of strength work as they lead to a competition, they'll now have four or eight months of strength work as they lead to a competition. Then they can peak at the end of it, taper for their competition, and hopefully have a really good performance. So the next example we have then is probably the opposite of that, or it really is the opposite of that, right? So field sports athlete, uh, most of the time in the Northern Hemisphere, if you're playing soccer, rugby, hockey, one of those sports, uh, anything basically except GA, you're going to have a season that will run September to, to around April or May, depending on how far you get in competition, depending on how your leagues and, and such are structured. What we have then is we have a small bit more restriction over when we'll do our GPP work. So most of the time, if our games are starting somewhere around the end of September, and they run through to December. We'll usually have some small break around Christmas. Uh, I know with a lot of rugby in the Northern Hemisphere, you'll usually get kind of three weeks off around Christmas. So this is a very, very valuable time around December and January for us to get in some of that GPP work. Now this being said, is being done with the, the kind of assumption that we don't have any major deficits, any major bias in a certain direction. If you somebody who's coming back for an injury, they probably won't be focusing on their GPP work in December and January. They'll probably be working on the rehab for that. And in the same way where you, if you have a player moving position or moving up from junior to senior structures, they might be looking to get more powerful, more speed work, whatever that is. They'll do that work in those times. So in that kind of mini break in December and January, but most of us will be able to do some GPP work or some aerobic conditioning work just in those three or four weeks. Now, the second place and the much more obvious place where field sports athletes do their GPP is in the off season. Now, it's incredibly important to note at this point that GPP work and off season work aren't the same thing. 
An off season is when you're not playing sport, right? And GPP work is part of the sport, although it is incredibly general. An off season must have some off in it. It's where you're not training, where you're not going to the gym. So it's important to note that here. But with all that being said, most of the time we'll finish games somewhere in March or April, depending on how far into competitions we get. Our GPP work then, assuming we have kind of four to six weeks off, our GPP work will come in somewhere around May or June. And what that is, is as you're doing the gym work to get bigger, stronger, faster, more powerful, you're doing your GPP work alongside that. So this might be rugby players or hockey players or football players going and doing their lifting in the gym. And then afterwards they do 25 minutes of conditioning or afterwards or on a non-gym day, they'll go and they'll do 400 meter repeats on the track. This kind of general physical preparedness fulfills two roles for the field sports athlete. So the first role it fulfills is it allows them to train at a much higher capacity. So when they're doing their strength work in the gym, their power work in the gym, their sprint work on the field, they're able to train more. They're able to express more of their athleticism in that training. And also what it really ensures is that when they get back into their pre-season work, so pre-season work will usually or traditionally have a lot of aerobic work in it, when they get back in in August or maybe even the end of July to their pre-season, they're not incredibly deconditioned aerobically and they won't end up losing a huge amount of condition because they have to train so hard in those initial four to six weeks of returning.